In this lab, I'll show you the correct methodology to safely find the unkeyed header using ParamMiner and how you can exploit that header to elicit a harmful response that gets injected into the cache server. The first thing we need to do is we need to identify a suitable cache oracle, and that's just to get confirmation that for a certain page, let's say the home page, that we see the presence of these response headers, cache control, age, and xcache hit or miss, just so that we know that that page is getting cached and that we can use that as a viable target to try and attempt our web cache poisoning. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the get slash request for the home page here, the slash endpoint, send it to repeater and switch to repeater. So we're trying to determine whether this home page is a cache oracle. So if I send a request, we can see those three cache related headers here. That's what we're looking for, a confirmation that it's possible for the response to this get request for the home page to be cached by a front end caching server. So we see the cache control header, which informs us that the max age uh, for a cache response is 30 seconds. The current age is zero seconds because we missed the cache. If we resend the request though, then we can see that the age is now at 22 seconds and that we hit the cache. So that means that the home page is a cache oracle, and we can continue to use this as a target for our web cache poisoning. But before we continue probing for any potential web cache poisoning vulnerabilities, we want to make sure that we add a cache buster and test whether we can actually add one. Because we want to start with a request number one, as we did previously, just to see that we get a cache hit for that request. But then we want to send a request number two immediately after, where it's the same identical request, but we do add a query parameter. In this case, I uh, gave it the name CB for cache buster with the value Yarno123. But there's gonna be any random name and any random value. It's just important that it's not the same as what you're using in request number one, which is just a naked uh, get request for the home page. And what we wanna see is that for request number one, we get a response with a cache hit. And then for request number two, we wanna make sure that we get a response with a cache miss. And the reason we should get a miss is because the caching server is using the concept of a cache key, where it's actually storing different versions of index.html for every unique cache key. Now, how is the cache key created? Well, when a request comes in, like the standard get request uh, number one here, where we do a get for the home page without any query parameters and with a standard host header, that's put in the cache store with request method get, URI path slash, uh, an empty query string, and then the standard host header. So that index.html will be served to any request that comes in from users uh, that match this cache key here. If we then go to request number two here, where we do add a query parameter for cache busting, then we can see that the cache key changes because we have a query string all of a sudden. So now, the cache server is going to store a new version of index.html, which it's only going to serve to requests coming in that match this cache key here with this cache buster attached in the query string. And the reason we add the cache buster is simply because when we start injecting a request header just to try and trigger a harmful response from the cache server store, we want to make sure that that harmful cached response only goes to us. We want to make sure that we're not actually impacting live users that are just trying to browse the, the front page, the home page of the application that we're targeting, because in a real pen testing situation, that's something you'd want to avoid. So we want to make sure that the poisoned index.html is only served to us because we are using that cache buster, which has a unique cache key and that any live user that is using a normal cache key for the front page is not actually impacted by any of the work that we're doing. So let's go back to burp and then send the request again just to refresh the cache so we get a cache miss now. We didn't add a cache buster yet. Let's send the request again just to make sure we get a cache hit. Yes, it has an age of four. Now let's quickly add a cache buster here. So we're gonna say cache buster equals yarn one, two, three, four and send the request again. And now we can see that we get a cache miss. So that confirms that the cache buster is working. And now we can safely continue our probing without affecting any live end users. Now, the next thing we wanna do is look for any in -key, unkeyed inputs. So we can use ParamMiner for that because I, I know that the lab hints already give away that it's the X forwarded host header that we're looking for, but it's important that you know how to do this yourself with ParamMiner. So all you need to do is right click on the request, go to extensions, ParamMiner, and then go to guest params and guest headers. And you can select the defaults here and just click OK. 
If you're using, because I'm using Burp Suite Professional, uh, I can find it here under Target. I can find the scan results. It might take a few minutes. I already ran the scan, so I already have it available here. But if I see the second result here, I can see that it found uh, potential for cache poisoning under the X forwarded host header. If you're using the Community Edition, I have that loaded here as well. I did a scan with that too. So initiating the scan is the same method uh, from Professional Edition and from Community Edition, but it's under a different location in the Community Edition. You have to go to Extensions and then select Param Miner. And then instead of Details, go to the Output tab. And you can see here that it already found the X forwarded host header. Now, before we start injecting this X forwarded host header into our requests, I do want to touch upon what an unkeyed input is. And it's the fact that this X forwarded host header isn't part of the cache key that the cache service store is using. The consequence of that is, is that this request here, our malicious request where we're trying to inject something malicious in that X forwarded host header, is treated identically by the cache service store as this valid request here, this normal healthy request from all end users that are visiting the home page. So if we are able to poison the cache service store using this X forwarded host header, then that means that we're also able to use the cache service store as a delivery mechanism to distribute that malicious payload to all end users. So let's inject that X forwarded host header into our request. So I'm going to switch back to Burp Professional and go back to Repeater. And then anywhere here in the request, I'm just going to add uh, the X forwarded host header for a value of, and I'm already going to uh, assign the value of our exploit server. So I'm going to go to the exploit server and just copy the host header bit here then go back to um, Burp Professional, paste it, and then send this request. And if I search for this in our output, I can find that it is reflected uh, in the response. And we can see here, it's very interesting, it's used as the source uh, for the, the host portion of a particular uh, JavaScript tracking file. So we can actually use this in our exploit server now. So I'm just going to copy the URI path here entirely. So resources up to and including tracking.js and then switch back to the exploit server and replace the path here, the file path. And then in the body, what we want to do is we want to say alert document.cookie and then store this and then switch back to burp. And let's send this request again, just to make sure that it's cached. We get a cache hit now. So I'm going to go back to the lab, but I'm going to copy our cache buster. Because if we just go to the front page and refresh, we don't get a pop up. But if we paste our cache buster, we do get a pop up because we are getting that uh, poisoned uh, response from the caching server. So that confirms that our exploit is working. All we need to do now is remove the cache buster portion. So we're actually uh, poisoning the request for the actual front page um, without a query string. That way we can use the caching server as a distribution mechanism to distribute the exploit to any victim or any end user that is visiting the home page. So I'm going to switch back to burp. And then all we need to do is remove the cache buster here. And then I'm going to send the request again get a cache miss. I'm just going to send it again to confirm that we have a cache hit. And now if I go to the front page, we should get a pop up. Yes, we do. All we need to yeah, there we go. The lab is already solved. So the victim um, browsed the uh, lab or the home page in the background. If the lab doesn't solve immediately for you, all you need to do is you need to keep refreshing the cache. So keep sending this request, you can see it's about to time out here the age. Just make sure that you send a request so that your uh, cached response or your injection here will be served to the end user. So we can see that's the case again here. And if we refresh, we still get the pop up. So just keep doing that, keep sending that request until the lab is solved. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.